Good day, everybody. This is Tech Talk with Tim. Um, joining me again this week is Roman Penkew with uh, the Vice President of Duraloy Technologies. Uh, Roman, a uh, couple of weeks ago, we did one of these talks and uh, I asked you about the dif difference between iron and steel. A tremendous amount of feedback uh, on, on that little talk. Uh, however, one of the questions I got asked was, can you tell us the difference between uh, rot and cast? So today, um, if you don't mind, share with us the uh, a little bit about the difference on rot and cast. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, when you say rot, I'm thinking of, you know, there's grades like 304, 330, 800 HT. Um, those are, are typical rot grades. And I'll talk about plates specifically, which is, you know, they're, they're, they're plates. Um, the big difference between the rot alloys, like I say, 330, 304, 800 HT, and cast is how they're made. So in the case of a rot plate, just, what you basically are doing is you're taking a billet or something like that. Can I stop you for a second? When you start sure. talking about grades, you're talking about the difference in the temperatures and what they can endure and... and... No, these are actually based on composition. So when you look like at a 304, that's uh, 18 chrome, eight nickel, uh, your cutlery, for example, you have a fork, it's usually 304. Uh, you've got 330, which is actually a uh, 17 chrome, 35 nickel, 800 HT, which is 20 chrome, 32 nickel. Uh, they're different chemical compositions. Okay, got it. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, nah, no problem. So, so anyway, so when you look at it, when you look at those rot grades, um, they're made by you take a billet of usually you have a big heat and you make billets out of them and then you roll them much like the old washing machines where you used to have the rollers and you roll them down to make them thinner. You heat them up and you roll them down to a certain thickness that you wanna attain. So those are mechanically worked, okay? So what they're doing is they're looking at mechanical working to roll it down. They heat it up, it's not liquid, it's still solid when it's being rolled, but it's very hot, you know, whatever, 2100 degrees or so, and they roll it down to make a thinner Plate. So that's mechanical working. So that's how that's made. In the case of the casting, what you're looking at is fluidity. You're taking actually liquid metal and pouring it into something to make a shape. So that's the major impact. Correct. Well, that could be either right there, but basically, yeah, that's a casting where you're, um, you're taking a liquid metal and pouring it into some sort of mold to make a shape. So that's where it starts from is how they're made. And that impacts the properties and the composition. So when you look at some of these alloys, you can make them similar composition, but they won't be the same. With the rot materials, you cannot have a high carbon material. They're normally very low carbon. Um, in the case of a cast material, carbon helps with fluidity. So a lot of the cast heat resistant alloys, you know, they run about a 0.35 to 0.45 carbon, whereas the rot materials are 10 times lower than that. So right off the bat, that's one of the major compositions. You know, your nickel, your chrome, your microalloy stuff can all be the same, but your carbon is going to be different. This, uh, this then impacts your mechanical properties because obviously higher carbon gives you much higher strength. So a cast alloy is much stronger than a wrought equivalent alloy, much stronger, you know, multiple stronger. The wrought alloy, however, one of the things with the mechanical working is you're actually rolling it so your grain structure is much smaller, more compact, more angular. So if you look under a microscope, a rot material will probably have a very small angular grains, very consistent. Whereas a cast material is gonna have big grains, carbides around the grains, and it's gonna have a much different microstructure. The rolling process and this whole rot thing gives it much more ductility. One, because it's got low carbon. Second, because you've got a very tight grain structure. And also most of the materials used for rot are, are refined uh, several times. So they're very clean. Whereas with a casting, you know, you get other types of imperfections in them. So um, that's kind of the manufacturing size that makes it different. So, so I wouldn't want, I, I would want to use a cast if I was going to make a dry roll. Um, you're or basically no. looking, you have to look at what the conditions are you're operating in. Um, if you have something that needs a high mechanical strength, high creep strength, yes, then you definitely want to go with cast. If you want something that's being thermal shocked all the time where you're dumping, say, cold material into something that's hot, the rot material would perform better, but it will have limited strength. So you really got to look at what your major 
controlling failure mechanism is. Okay. Well, again, thank you for uh, for joining us in this discussion. Um, for those of you watching, um, hit like, subscribe uh, below. Um, and again, if you have any questions or if you have other other topics you want us to discuss, uh, we have a lot more coming out. However, if we're asked a question throughout the process, we'll gladly uh, shoot a quick video and try to explain some of this stuff. Um, again, thank you, Roman. Uh, look forward to talking with you next time. Great, thanks.